Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Carnival Zombie the second edition. This game is by Albi Pavo, it plays one to six players, takes roughly 45 minutes to up to 120, and it's for ages 14 and up. And in the game Carnival Zombie, it plays kind of like the tower defense game where all the zombies and monsters are coming in from the outside into the middle location which is called Castle Panic. You are playing as one or maybe more survivors that are trying to fight the zombie infestation. But this is not necessarily just a zombie game. This involves cubes, dropping cubes on the board, pushing them towards the middle, exploding them with your guns, and then dropping them down with a dexterity aspect onto a tombstone and hoping that they stay dead because you know, zombies can come back. There are multiple different scenarios. In this second edition that comes with a bunch of deluxified components, adding in miniatures, additional scenarios, and of course the back of the board, which includes this crazy sea serpent and which could awaken throughout the game. You're going to be fighting against bosses that are not just the cubes, and of course you're using tokens to move around the city, experience the story, and go through two to three rounds of play in this game. It's quite simple, but there's a lot going on. It uses this large card here, and I'll go through most of that after I explain the setup. I'll do that, and then of course I will explain the game as best as I can, and finally my review. The setup for the game Carnival Zombie 2nd Edition really depends on the scenario you want to play. The very basic scenario is called Plague in Venice, and this explains all the special rules for the game, the victory conditions, and the basic setup for the game, which changes what types of items you're going to add to the draw bag. In general, most of the zombies are going to be added to this draw bag here, all the cubes based on the four different zombies in the game, a certain number of survivors, a certain number of black cubes that are going to be detrimental to the players, and then you're going to set aside things like these storage units, these little containers, these barricades that protect you from the zombie invasion. Uh, so after you set the bag up and determine all the special rules, you're also going to be implementing six characters in the game, and you can choose between the eight or nine characters they have available to you. Each character is going to come with a character sheet, a character deck, a starting card with a star, and a character unit that you'll be placing in the middle of the board when it tells you to do so. The rest of the characters can be set aside and you'll place your character marker on the board on one of the stress level indicators in the middle section bottom of the board. You're also going to be placing the time marker in some location on the board as well, basically underneath the sun, and you're going to be taking this other marker here indicating what ticket you're on aka what round. And generally speaking, there's three rounds, but if you choose the very basic plague scenario, there's only going to be two, making the game a little shorter as an introductory explanation. You'll have this compass token you'll place down as well, indicating which way you're going to be moving with your characters to start with, which is basically the city, the overworld map, and every scenario will change where you're going to be starting based on which scenario you're choosing to play with. You'll have the extra markers that you'll be indicating on the board for like different obstacles and helping spaces and then any other tokens that will assist you as far as uh, certain characters will have them like the captain or other characters might utilize them when cards get drawn. And the final thing you need to worry about other than the other two card decks is this tombstone. Place it somewhere on the board within reach of all players so that they can drop cubes down whenever they defeat zombies. The bosses in the game are in this red deck, which you'll shuffle and place down right above the board here, and you'll place them down face up whenever they're indicated to do so based on the scenario. And finally, you're going to have the randomizer deck, the event deck. This is going to be drawn at the beginning of the game and shuffled when it ever runs out. And this will also be used for any random events. Where do I need to go? Where do I need to place, etc.? This card will be drawn. Uh, what items you might get based on your characters activating, etc, etc. And then finally, just go ahead and set the rule books aside somewhere within reach to all players, and that's basically the setup for the game Carnival Zombie. The game round is going to be set up based on this day-night cycle track on the board in the bottom right-hand corner, or left-hand corner for you guys. Um, basically what's going to happen is you're going to take this player aid. It's a large player aid. It explains everything, and I'll just go through it with you guys because there's a lot to memorize. And the first thing is you'll reshuffle the Nightmare deck if you need to. This is the event deck. The event deck is going to be what draws cards and stuff happens. You'll place a foundering soak token in the city if it tells you to do so. In the plague example, you don't do this. This is like kind of extra, but uh, you'll place these little plus one tokens, making it more challenging in the game in random locations, depending on what it tells you to do. The event of the day, you'll draw a nightmare card and you'll reveal it. You'll see what it does. For this day, each character performing the search action gets one stressed. 
stress is basically damage in the game. So you'll draw that card, you'll do what it says. And then you'll move the clock. The clock will then move from the bottom to the first space, the first action space of the game, in which case you'll do group movement. And you can decide on your, with your group, which number of spaces you'd like to move. And each one is going to increase the amount of uh, actions you can, or reduce the amount of actions you can take during the day phase. So you want to kind of be careful with how many you spend moving, but you want to move enough to where it's going to help you achieve the victory condition of the scenario. So I can move one and I can move two, and then I would lose uh, two spaces in this scenario, meaning I'm going to lose two actions for the entire group. And after you move, the space that you move on is going to have a specific action. It's going to have a certain number of these circles on it which will indicate uh, bad and good spaces that will be on the board that you're going to randomly place down uh, based on using those cards there. And then you'll be able to take your actions, character actions, and each player is going to get one. And that's for every single sun left over before you get to the moon. So if you have two suns left over, you'll get to take two more full rounds of character actions before the sunset phase. And I'll talk about the, the abilities. They're pretty quick. Basically, there's a sunlight ability on every single character's card. You can use that. Some of them are going to give you barricades or heal. Some of them are going to let you uh, remove stress. They all just really depend on the specific character. You're also going to have a search ability, which you basically draw one of these cards from the deck. You'll check the bottom portion on the left-hand side and see what you get. Might be a survivor that you add to the bag, might be an item card you draw for your deck, and it might be stress or a black cube that you're going to be placing down into the bag, which when it comes out will give your characters less actions to use. And, and then of course you'll also be able to take an item, um, which is nice. Uh, but basically there's different things that can happen based on what you draw from that deck if you're trying to go for an item. And uh, then you can also do the special action location, basically the location which is with the guy is the first, the first character who activates can choose to do that. And you can reanimate any characters that died in the game phase. You'll bring them back to their lowest stress, uh, highest stress level in the red area, and then they can come back. Because uh, you can have a full party wipe, but there are other ways to lose the game as well. After you have done all the actions, then you're going to check to see uh, what the next portion reveals, which is going to be the sunset. The sunset is this moon at the very top. And remember, whenever your token on this track <laughs> is placed on a certain area, you'll have to check all the markers, uh, or all the icons on that space to see if you can use any abilities that you have on your character. Because sometimes you can only use those abilities or cards based on where you place that marker. You'll check and find any terrain. You'll be placing these randomly on the board somewhere or giving yourself bonus spaces on your areas. You're going to be having your characters deployed into one of the four middle spaces of the board, which is going to then activate um, where they're going to start and how you can utilize them. The boss is going to enter based on the difficulty level of the game mode and based on you can choose your difficulty. Then you're going to go ahead and flip over cards from the deck here and add bosses. And there's a ton of boss miniatures in this box that you'll be adding to the outskirts of the board, still once again utilizing this deck here for random generation or random placement, which will usually always be on the outskirts of the area, so the very out, outer edge of the board. And then after that, you're going to go ahead and move the marker. And then the night phase is going to begin. And it's going to be the same thing. Players can use items. All the bad guys and the bad, uh, bad zombies are going to pop out. And you're going to get like three zombies in each of the outer areas here. You'll be like randomly drawing him, them from this bag here and placing them down onto the board. And thusly filling up the board. So you have to deal with all these different hazards and dangers. And once the whole board is filled up, then we'll move on to the next phase. Ah, there we go. Um, remember too, sometimes survivors might come out and if you're able to clear an entire area where the survivor is, you'll get that survivor to use for later. Black cubes might pop out in which you have to put them on your specific units, which will make you lose specific actions until you get rid of them, etc., etc. Then the bosses and the infected will move and each of the characters has a specific movement as to how far they can go. So if they're the bosses which are in the box here would move. You'd have all these guys move and the only ones that are gonna move more than one are the white ones, which are like the zombie dogs. So they move a little faster than everybody else. And you just check the spaces and move them. You go, okay, one, 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 two for the, red, uh, the white, one, two for the white, one, one, one. And bam, now you've got a ton of zombies to deal with. And then there we go. Now we have character actions. On your turn during the night phase, you get one action. 
and you can take an extra action for a stress. Whenever you deal with stress, which is also damage, you'll move your character to the left or right, based on where they're positioned, to take damage. If they go past the board, they're gonna be KO'd. Here are the actions. So first thing you can do is move. You can just move to any location in the middle because your range uh, of attacking is gonna be based on where you're located. You can fire, which will check your character to see what you're going to do. On the very bottom of your character card, it will distinguish what you have and how you can use it. Like for instance, this guy here, the skeleton, is gonna have a uh, one shot for one damage at one range. And you'll just pick off monsters. All the small ones will die instantly. However, the bosses will actually have HP, which will use these red cubes to distinguish how much damage they have taken. Once they've gotten their full amount, they're gone. So as long as you're able to hit them, they'll take damage. And if you're dealing with big monsters that have two health that are not bosses, you just have to hit them for two and then one activation and, and that will kill them. Otherwise, they're not gonna die. So you can't just do one damage to a two monster that is a cube and place it. There's too many of them on the board anyway, so that's not how it works. <laughs> and finally, you can assault. If you have some monsters that are actually dropped in around the board here next to you, you can use your assault action, which is on your character, in usually the top right, or to, uh, top right section, but on the bottom right of your car of your player like portrait it'll tell you how much damage you can do and to how many of them and then you also have the ability if you have survivors that you saved up in your little pool area there you can take them and place them on bosses to slow them down for a turn it'll stop them from moving which is very very beneficial um, and of course you have a free night ability action. So unlike uh, the sun phase where it's an action you choose for your son so in this case here let's just choose one of them the commando can move during the night phase and that's a free action whereas he can give somebody a card in the day phase but that's going to cost him an action um then of course after everybody has done all their things the infected are going to attack if they're adjacent they will attack they will do damage to our heroes and then bam dawn is going to happen there are certain uh points in time where you'll place barricades so i didn't mention too if you have barricades um just before oh, you take actions and whatnot after the sun phase you'll be taking these guys and placing them around the board to protect certain portions of the board that will protect you from zombie attacks just for a period of time before they are destroyed and you can choose to place them how you'd like um, but the group will decide through which pit they're going to try to flee. So they'll choose like a location with this little compass here. And uh, you will try and basically, okay, I'm gonna go, I wanna go to the west and I wanna go through here. And if there's zombies there, you'll have to deal with them. There's a little like kind of mini thing that you do, but if there are none, you can just kind of escape through that way. You'll check to see if you saved any victims, etc., etc. And it goes through all the the reset up for the next phase and moving down to the next ticket. And that's basically an entire round of play. There are a few little things I've left out and there's a ton of variation in this game, but that's the main idea. The sun phase will happen. Everybody gets to move all of their character party around. Any leftover actions, the group gets to do uh, that many times for the sunset. Uh, then you're gonna go ahead and trigger all of the monsters and the barricades and the bosses. And then during the night phase, you'll activate your characters again, maybe take stress to activate them two times dealing with the threats before then they go to attack and the threats trying to defeat your barricades and then try to defeat you rinse and repeating through the next ticket and the next ticket and uh, trying to accomplish your objective which depends on the specific scenario that you're playing in a carnival zombie i hope i explained this well while just trying to go through it so carnival zombie is basically to me a complicated version of castle panic but when i say complicated i mean it in a good way that means there's a lot of different choices you can take if you're looking for something very simplistic that is kind of like a, a, a tower defense slash king of the hill game and you don't want all the complications of the different characters and their abilities and all the different guns and equipments and cards that you can draw, then yeah, you probably wanna go with Castle Panic. But if you want something with more depth, with more story, choices, scenarios, cards, tokens, zombies, and other unique effects, along with a secondary board with even more scenarios, then Carnival Zombie is going to be your choice. This game is Excellent. Before I even get into the review, it is excellent. This is a ton of fun. You feel powerful at the beginning. You feel extra powerful as you upgrade. It's fun to work with other players, making choices, making decisions throughout the game. You are going to dig Carnival Zombie if you're a modern gamer and you want a little bit more 
oomph. Now, of course, this has the pretty basic aspects of it. Like every little portion that you do is pretty simplistic, but it's when it all comes together and all your choices that have been made throughout the game kind of are attached to one another. And you see how well you've done based on that and how many things you can have done could have done better. It's never really uh, a lot of chance that comes to this game other than like what bosses appear in, what zombies appear and where they spawn. But basically all your actions are yours. There's no like rolling dice, nothing like that. You're going to be pushing yourself to the limit, trying to secure all the possible kills that you can get. Placement is so important. What gun you have is very important. How you choose to help your allies is extremely important. And who you give to what character to play what role they'd like to play, because each of these characters functions very, very, very differently. In fact, one doesn't even have a deck. One actually steals cards from other people's decks and assists people with the cards that they stole. So there is, a, there is not a shortage to the amount of different characters that you can play in this game. So before we go into more complexity with the gameplay, let's just let's just gush about the quality. This game is awesome looking. All of the quality artwork is there. The board looks nice. You know where everything goes. You know what everything is about. These are the minions. These are the bosses. There is your health track there. These are the rounds. This is what the round is going to be about. And it tells you and you can go, go step by step through all the the somewhat complicated different things that you'll be doing during the sunrise and sunset, the day phase, the night phase, when you can play cards. It's all illustrated there and you know, you see when you can use your cards. It's wonderful. This board here, this is the overworld. This is Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy VIII, when you're going from one location to the next location and you're moving your party around. There are new threats, there are new challenges, there are new bonuses, and there are randomized things that can happen as well going through this, which is also based on the scenario with additional special rules. Moving can reduce the amount of daytime actions you get, but it's going to give you the benefit of being able to get to a location you need to get to by the time you need to do so for the scenario. Secondly, you're going to have the over the main map of the game board, which is going to be throwing you zombies. Zombies and more zombies and more zombies. They're gonna be dropping on the board and it all looks really well here. It's distinguished, one, two, three three barricades and four locations in the middle. And then of course, you're gonna have bonus spaces that might help you or hurt you based on where you are as a party. It works. Your character and then your set of cards that you're going to get, that's all you need in the game, plus the one that you start with. Everything is detailed on here. You've got your weapons, you've got your nighttime ability and your daytime ability and an assault. And that's all you need for the game. As you get the cards, it'll tell you when you can use them. There's the symbol here, there's a symbol on the board. It's Brilliant. This game, I was able to teach people who were not even very familiar with board games, even though it's more complicated and more like complex strategy with lots of choices, they figured it out the first round of play, which is important because in general, there's only three rounds in the entire game. The game can go on for 45 minutes or two hours or a little longer if you're newer, and that's actually too true with the rules and how it's stated. Based on what you want to play, you can play a shorter variant with the plague, which is what I did for my first game to illustrate to the people how to play, and they jumped on and and wanted to play again right afterwards, which says not only, um, it shows how truly great this game is. Okay, so now that I'm done gushing about the artwork, the quality of the miniatures, all this stuff is really nice. The cubes, the pieces are all thick. This is going to last you a long time. More gameplay. What's cool about the gameplay is the amount of luck is dictated basically primarily on where the zombies spawn. And when you defeat the zombies, You'll have to take all the zombies and drop them on this... Oh no! Uh, this uh, gravestone marker. And whenever one drops off, like our little green friend over here, huh, it's going to go back on the board in a randomized space based on where it fell. So you can choose sometimes between certain spaces where you killed the zombies. Um, and you're just trying to stack and stack and stack. And as more and more zombies start growing on here, it's gonna start getting more and more difficult to not drop cubes from once they are. But this will reset every round. So it's not gonna get super crazy, but it will generate more zombies periodically. And at one point, when you have to get through the game uh, from moving to the, you know, the west or the east or whatever, you're gonna have to make sure that when you defeat them, they stay on here. Otherwise, you're gonna start taking more and more damage. 
The bosses are unique. They have a twist to them. Some of them will enhance the zombies on the field. Others are going to be just big, strong beaters that are going to move around the board and smack you really hard. Others can be quick with quite a bit of health, and they all have like unique things that they can do, like as far as, oh, in this case here, whenever you drop a zombie off of the board, you're going to take an additional two stress or one stress. So it's going to increase the amount of damage you take based on your mistakes. Mm. And they, there's, there's a lot of things you can do with these different baddies here, as you can see. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about, too, is the, the dexterity in this game is light. It's only going to be popping up when you defeat zombies. You can have anybody else drop them if you don't want to do it yourself. Maybe you have shaky hands or unsteady hands. Have somebody else do it if you would like. And focus on the more complicated portion of the game, which is all about choosing and using your actions well. Uh, the different characters function in different ways. The captain is going to be more of a support role. You're going to have a character that's more of a healer. And then you have a few funky classes. You have characters that are just straight up damage dealers that have multiple guns in their deck. There's always an upgrade for every character and their gun in the deck. And when you find that and put it out, it's going to definitely help your party as you go along. And you can feel the thrill and excitement of this game. Okay, uh, that's pretty much what I really wanted to cover. I mean, you have like things like the, the survivors that will slow bosses down, which is imperative as you get throughout the game. It gets more and more challenging. You could choose the different difficulty levels. So you can make this an easygoing zombie exploding experience, or you can make this a horde onslaught that's going to be very, very detrimental to your party experience. It's all based on how you want to play and what characters you want to choose. There are obviously characters that are better than others at defeating zombies. And that's the most important thing in this game for the most part with supporting roles being attached. So there you go, Carnival Zombie. Excellent quality, excellent production value, and the gameplay is simply remarkable with unique little twists and turns. People who might not like this game are people who are maybe not going to enjoy the dropping the cubes on this specific little zombie tombstone here because it's random to a certain extent what comes back on the board, but I just gotta say, if you don't like that, honestly, it's not a huge, huge portion to the game that you might think it is. It does kind of make the game a little bit more challenging, and for some people it's really enjoyable, so just let those people do it. Otherwise, though, an excellent version of a game that you feel like you're in an overworld and then the main world, and a zombie blower-upper. This is like, it's kind of like that, uh, uh, I can't remember what it's called, level 9 Omega Protocol, where you start off real strong and you just get stronger and you're blowing a bunch of stuff up and it just feels good to do that. So, is it approved? Yes! This is when you get my stamp of approval, which is no shock because I'm sure a bunch of other companies have done this as well. But yes, if you don't have Carnival Zombie and you haven't played it, at least give it a try if you are interested in it, because I don't think you'll be disappointed. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Carnival Zombies Second Edition. Uh, I didn't even talk about a whole lot of the expansion stuff, but there is, and as soon as I get into it, I'm gonna make another video covering that so I can show you what the opposite side of the board is and what happens in the game. It might be shorter, it might be longer, it just really depends on what the gameplay is, but I wanted to cover this because I hadn't played it before. Check it out, uh, link down below in the description. You can also go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you like videos like this one or our new Magic series. We're doing little game shows on there. We have a live stream every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST on Twitch, YouTube, and on Facebook where you can watch us play games live just like this one every Sunday. And thank you so much, guys. All right, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to blowing up some zombies with you next time.